make sure you guys smash that subscribe button if you guys are fans of the content being posted onto this channel to always be in the loop with more content similar to this and be sure to hit the video up with a like if you're enjoying the content and with that being said let's begin with dragon ball super manga chapter number 51 looming over the horizon many fans within the dragon ball community are asking the question what exactly is vegeta looking for on planet yardrad and whatever he ends up finding on planet yardrad is that going to work in his advantage in going up against moro now who not only has a small army to work with him but is also seemingly getting stronger each time he faces off with goku vegeta and the daikaio now many concepts and ideas ideas suggest the fact that Vegeta is going to plan a Yardrat to simply learn the instant transmission technique to in which I did a video on my channel basically covering the pragmatics of why this is not going to be the case nor why it makes sense for Vegeta to learn the instant transmission technique now especially after seeing Goku use it in his battle against Moro to in which it had absolutely no effect in what Moro was doing during the course of their battle against him so instant transmission isn't really going to work so why is he going to planet Yardrad. A lot of people are suggesting the fact that perhaps maybe Vegeta is going there to grow out his tail and then somehow possibly learn Super Saiyan 4 along the way or something very eerily similar to what Broly had demonstrated in Dragon Ball Super Broly with his Akari transformation but it's also safe to assume that it really wouldn't make any sense for Vegeta to go to planet Yardrad simply to grow his tail back and find another transformation that goes possibly beyond Super Saiyan Blue if just recently he had obtained Super Saiyan Blue Evolution in the Dragon Ball Super manga and in the anime itself. So, Vegeta could be going to Planet Yardrad to learn a brand new technique and or ability that could give him the upper hand against Moro having to take his power. Now, it's eerily fascinating to see how Vegeta was cognitively aware in the fact that his god powers weren't doing any justice in this fight against Moro, in the fact that Moro's magic was simply too much for him to even bear, and becoming very angry in the fact that this is no longer a straightforward battle but instead different tactics different abilities different hacks different transformations are relied upon just to simply have a one-on-one -on -one fight so vegeta based on what we've been seeing in the dragon ball super manga wants a straightforward one-on-one -on -one battle against moro to in which i do think that based on the overall direction and the narrative going forward right now it's safe to say that this could be vegeta's moment in finally having to defeat a villain by himself if not by himself Himself, then by the assistance of Goku and the Daikaio as Vegeta takes the lead against Moro. But the question lingers, what could Vegeta possibly do in this case to prevent Moro from stealing his own energy? Because every single time Vegeta steps into battle against Moro, Moro goes on ahead to subconsciously take Vegeta's power and use that against him. So again, why would Vegeta go to Planet Yardrat to learn the instant transmission when in the previous manga chapter he flat out said, forget instant transmission, we Saiyans pride ourselves on physical might and nothing more, and a warrior race has no need for fancy parlor tricks. So this to me indicates that Vegeta is going to learn something that is going to further enhance his own brute physical strength that can give him a chance against Moro even if Moro tries to steal his energy, which I do think that Vegeta is going to learn something on planet Yardrat to prevent his energy from being taken, because if you guys recall in going back to to the original Dragon Ball Z show, Frieza and the Ginyu Force originally had interest in going to Planet Yardrat to simply investigate and carry out their mission in invading the Yardrat people, but never went along to follow through simply after Goku's arrival on Namek and having to fight against Frieza. So Frieza never went to Planet Yardrat, but he was planning on going there. But with Vegeta going there, I don't think that we are going to see Vegeta reemerge in the arc relatively soon after he goes there, but instead, I think that we are going to have a focus between Goku, the Daikaio, and Moro along with his army because I can see Goku coming up with a plan to primarily work with the Daikaio since Vegeta won't be there, but I do want to go on ahead and prognosticate what Vegeta could be bringing to the table once he ends up returning in his battle to finish off Moro, and that's number one, the proposal of Vegeta having to reverse the energy having to be taken by a host and having to bring that energy back to the person that originally lost it, so I would have to say a technique that reverses the energy absorption from a host so that way let's say Vegeta is fighting Moro and he knows that his energy is being drained from his body he could perform a technique and or ability that could reverse the effects of Moro having to take that power from Vegeta and 
can't simply bring it back within his body. So, in an essence, no matter how many times Moro can try to take at least Vegeta's energy, every single time he can attempt to do so, Vegeta could just reverse that and bring his energy back within his body. Or maybe the ability itself could also work with a third party. So let's say as an example, if Moro attempts to drain Goku and the Daikaiyo's energy, Vegeta can perform this technique slash ability that would reverse the effects of Moro taking that and bringing that power and energy back to the original host. So, I can ultimately see the Yardrats basically teaching Vegeta an ability that maintains his own strength without it having to be taken from someone, so that would be a good ability for someone like Vegeta to counter Moro with, especially if Vegeta wants to get in there and slug it out with Moro, because that's all Vegeta had been looking for ever since they originally went after this guy, and Vegeta is very frustrated that he can't do that because every single time Vegeta attempts to fight this guy one on one, he takes Vegeta's energy, further reverts his Saiyan transformation back down to base, and then further manhandles him by using his own energy against him. So, I think that option number one could be some type of absorption reversal, whereas option number two could be some type of sealing method. But then again, a lot of people could have a problem with Moro having to get locked up again and going back to the Galactic Prison, which I don't think is going to happen because the level of carnage that Moro is causing right now is subjected for this guy to be killed off because you can't afford to keep someone like Moro around for another 10 million years because there is that chance that he could ultimately break out again and then if that happens it's only going to spell disaster for those that are left with the responsibility in dealing with this dude at some point if he ends up breaking out again. So what about the idea of some type of sealing method? We've seen lots of people be sealed away before. Of course we have the Mafuba technique, we have the technique of the Elder Kai having to be sealed away within the Z-Sword, there is a possibility that there is some type of ability or technique or item that can be used to seal away Moro, but I don't think that if Vegeta were to show up in that fight, will he bring an item with him, but instead, if he does end up sealing Moro away, I do think that it's going to be as an end result of an ability and technique and not with the usage of any kind of item. So just in case you're wondering if Moro is going to get sealed away in a sword or in a jar, I don't think that's going to be the case, but if Vegeta then knows of an ability or technique that can seal Moro away or trap him away permanently, then that could be a viable option to be used if weakened during the course of battle, but that's a big risk because then you're going to have to introduce the element of surprise by catching Moro off guard and then sealing him away. But the question is, would Moro be aware of this strategy during the course of battle in having to face off against Vegeta if he does learn a new ability that is able to seal someone like Moro away? However, in order for Vegeta to learn anything by the Yardrats, he's going to also have to swallow his pride and accept the fact that the Yardrats are going to have to be his teachers for the time being very similar to how Vegeta swallowed his pride in allowing himself to become the student to Whis as his teacher. As only then we understand that the Yardrats are physically weak as a species, but do have and possess abilities and techniques that further influence space and time itself, as well as being technologically advanced as a race, as we've seen with Goku when they fixed his ship, healed his body, and taught him a very unique and useful technique that even till this day, whenever Goku uses it, his opponent it seems to be baffled. And that is why I don't believe that Vegeta is going to get any other transformation outside of what he has now, or at least not yet, because it's not Vegeta's time, it's not Goku's time to get any new transformation until sometime in the foreseeable future. Could that be Akari? Could that be somehow an ascended level beyond that of Super Saiyan Blue, or maybe even Ultra Instinct? Who knows? But right now, in terms of transformation levels, that doesn't seem to be the case. So, I think that Vegeta will in fact gain a new technique slash ability that will give him the upper hand against Moro, but even if Vegeta enters this battle with a brand new technique, Moro is still a great threat to everyone at hand, so that is why even with Vegeta there, I don't think that Vegeta could get the job done by himself without the assistance of Goku and the Daikaiyo to further aid him in this battle to finally put Moro down for the count. To in which I do think that Vegeta needs to be the victor of this story, because so far we've always seen Vegeta in action, and we've always seen him stand right by Goku throughout every single battle, but 
Vegeta had always fallen behind, so if there was ever a time to give Vegeta the spotlight against a very powerful and very intelligent enemy, then this would be it. Even if they want to give Goku the essential plot wank in the future against future enemies, perhaps maybe a Jiren rematch, a Broly rematch, or maybe even mastering UI against a very powerful opponent, they can do that, but for this specific arc right here, they need to give most of the shine, if not all of it, to Vegeta and the Daikaio, if of course you want to add the Daikaio in, in providing assistance and support from the sidelines, in giving Vegeta the opportunity to not only redeem himself, but also prove to Goku and everyone else that he in fact can get the job done on his own if he were to act alone in figuring things out by himself to further get the job done. So I think this is Vegeta's time, this should be Vegeta's time, and even if they were to give Vegeta the spotlight for this one moment, I think it would be very fulfilling to see, especially with how far Vegeta had gotten in the show. But in the end, I want to get your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you guys think Vegeta is going to plan at Yardrat for? Is it for a brand new ability, a brand new technique? Is it for a brand new purpose in seeking out a new transformation? Or do you think that Vegeta is going there for a different reason? But as well as Moral too, where do you guys see Moral's placement in the upcoming Dragon Ball Super Manga chapter? And do you guys think that Goku and the Daikaio can hold their own in this battle against Moral and his minions? A Especially after fleeing planet Namek, are they going to go to Earth? Are they going to battle in a different location? I want to get your thoughts in the comment section below as we are going to be covering the entirety of Dragon Ball Super Manga chapter number 51 on the channel once it drops in English. So again, be sure to go on ahead and smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to never miss a single upload. Give this video a big fat like by slapping that thumbs up button guys if you guys are stoked, ready, and excited to see what Vegeta has in store for this upcoming battle against Moro. Thank you all so much for watching guys once more. If you guys have not joined my Discord, my new Discord link will be located down below as well as following me on Twitter, twitter.com slash gaming. Subscribe to my secondary and third channels as well. All the links to everything will be located down below. Tune back in for more. Thank you all so much for your time and I'll be seeing you all down in the comment section below. Have a great day everybody. Peace. This is the Galactic Emperor of the Universe, and of course I'm here to tell you to subscribe to Unrelent Gaming. Also follow Unrelent Gaming on these social media platforms to stay connected at all times. And if you don't, then very soon you will all be dead. <laughs> oh, did someone say Unrelent Gaming? Oh my god. The fuck's up, I'm put on some clothes! Well, why don't you put on any clothes? What? I don't need clothes! But, uh, Jesus Christ, that's huge! <laughs> what, Broly? Freezer. Uh-oh. Prepare to die! <laughs> <laughs>